uh, we're going to go into enlisted under Christ, and it's basically going into uh, order and how, you know, in the world on your job, or if you're in the military, you know, there's structure, there's order. Um, in the nation of Israel, you know, that's what the leadership is setting out to do, is to bring a structure and an order. And um, when you look at Israel and I and Christ, um, at least when I first joined, that was one of the things that set IUIC apart for me when I looked at all the uh, other camps, the fact that they had structure, order. You see other camps out there, they got people out there, the shirts not matching, just simple stuff. Like you see the, you know, when I first saw the bishop out there on the corner, you saw the, 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 the uniforms, the order they had, the structure, everything set up. And um, as, uh, cause when I signed up, I think, what was it, like seven schools maybe? I think, so, but all the schools were the same. They had the same camp signs, the same uniforms, they had the same formations. So, and then uh, just watching, you know, first coming in, trying to find the truth, you look at other Israelite groups, they, you know, it's, it just wasn't, it's, yeah, it wasn't organized. You look at, no, nope, yeah, everything was just out of order. So that was one of the first things. So let's go to Romans 15 and four. Let's start there. The book of Romans chapter 15 and verse four. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's, that's heavy right there, because it says we through patience, so meaning we have to have patience and take comfort in the scriptures, because guess what? If you keep in the commandments, then there's going to be good things happening to you. We see uh, all the signs and things that's going on now, but we shouldn't have to worry about it, because our comfort has got to be in the scriptures that we might have hope. And these things, uh, and it says, start out again, read the top precept. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. So let's talk about what? The things that's written in this Bible. All of this stuff that's written before before us is things for us to learn from. We got bad examples in here that we can learn from, and we got a lot of good examples. You know, so we're going to go over some of that today. You got something else you want to say? Okay, so let's jump to Wisdom of Solomon. Uh, seven. I used the spirit because I was thinking about something too. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> Read that again. Read that again. <laughs> Romans 15 and 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. You see that thing? So this, this one verse right here is letting you know like you studying these scriptures, they were written for your learning. Mm. So that means you learn from what's written. And some things like I was saying to avoid, mm -hmm. and then some things to do so you can prosper. So this is not a suggestion. It's like, hey, this is our law. This is the instructions for our lives as Israelites. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really important that brothers and sisters, when you read over this stuff, you actually apply the good things for our prosperity. What else? All right, so we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna look at uh, King Solomon and see what he wrote, and we gotta understand the type of wisdom that he had. Jump to Wisdom of Solomon seven and fifteen. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter seven and verse fifteen. God hath granted me to speak as I would, and to conceive as is meet for the things that are given me, because it is He that leadeth unto wisdom. And directeth the wise. You see that? So God leadeth unto wisdom, and he's going to direct the wise. He's not going to direct no fools. Keep reading. For in his hand are both we and our words, all wisdom also, and knowledge of workmanship. Read. For he hath given me certain knowledge of the things that are, namely to know how the world was made and the operation of the elements. So this is uh, Solomon telling you to, to understand that the most I gave him. He gave them some stuff that, you know, a lot of people, you got Esau out there searching all over trying to figure these things out. But Solomon knew these things. It says the operation of the elements. That's some heavy stuff right there to know how the elements of the world operate. You understand that? Read. The beginning, ending, and midst of the times. You know what? He knew how the world started, how it was going to end, and all throughout. So he knew... Everything about how the world, the whole, just imagine that. You know everything that's happening. You know what's going to happen in the end. Read. The alterations of the turning of the sun and the change of seasons. You see that? He knew the solar system. Can you imagine that? 
The changing of the seasons, all of that stuff. Hey, so he knew the solar system before Esau said, before they came up with their, their theories. Right, right. He said, I already know how it really runs. The most high bestowed that knowledge upon me and not their theories. Because you when you read that again, it says the alterations of the sun. Letting you know the sun goes around the earth. Not vice versa, what Esau's theories are. Because you gotta think about that. In order for you to uh, you know, even in, even in their science, they say you have to observe in order for you to come up with a theory or a hypothesis. So how are they observing the sun? Or well, how are they observing the planets go around the sun? Right. How are you doing that? Even if you use your telescopes, your telescope can't see the big picture. It can't see it all and how it's moving. I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. I don't know if they're picking up what you're saying there. But in order for you to see what's revolving around what, you got to have a big enough telescope or something to see everything to be able to determine that. They got to be far enough away and able to capture that. So they don't know what the hell they're talking about. But Esau, <laughs> hey, Esau's a devil, man. You know, because he speaks with such confidence yep. that he can convince anybody of anything. They're so confident. And go ahead, what's that? That means he'd have to be outside of our solar system to see that, which they haven't even traveled that far. They can't travel that far. They try, they can make it. They have to be outside the solar system, past the sun. <laughs> past the sun for them to see that. <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, man. They, they, they trying to get off this planet. I know that. Because they know what's coming. That's why they, they see the chariots out there. Read. Hey, go ahead, read. Real quick, real quick. I just had a precept for that one. Um, as, as far as uh, us learning everything and, and knowing everything, and things being an example to us. Get 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and uh, 11. Because you wouldn't know things unless you actually experienced it first. It wouldn't happen and just blurt it out and just make things up unless it actually came to pass first. Or you've seen these things come and it actually happened before so you can explain it to people. Go ahead. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter, one and verse, chapter 10 and verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our ad admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. See that? Only reason people know that the ends of the world or times is coming is because of the examples of the scriptures. We only know because it said that these things supposed to happen first. These are the examples. So now we're going to explain it to y'all so y'all can see it, and here it comes. Here come the end of the world. It's not just coming all of a sudden. It's coming because thus saith the Lord. These things was written for our examples, for our learning. Go ahead, Verse 19. The circuits of years and the positions of stars, the natures of living creatures, and the furies of wild beasts. Man, just imagine that. He knew about the animals too. So you got Esau out there trying to talk to the animals and getting his ass ate up. That'd be tripping me out. You see the videos, the dude out there, he got deer pee on him. Y'all ever see that video where the deer beat the hell out of that dude? Hey, can y'all look that up? Because he's trying to find out the furies of the wild beast too, and that deer whooped that dude, but you know what I'm talking about? That deer showed him the furies of the yeah, wild beast. Yeah, he sure did. Read, read that again. Uh, the, the nature of living things, living creatures, and the furies of wild beasts. Go ahead. The violence of winds, See that? The violence of winds. You got Esau, he'd be out there storm chasing uh, tornadoes and hurricanes and all that, trying to figure out if y'all ever seen that movie, The Twister, where they was trying to put that uh, pie in the middle of the uh, tornado to figure out how they work. Solomon knew all of that stuff. Read. And the reasonings of men. Meaning what? He knew how to reason, how why men did the thing they did. The diversities of plants. So he even knew how the diversity of plants, how the different plants and all that. Just imagine, you know all of that, read. And the virtues of roots. So the virtues of the roots. Because we use roots for a lot of different things, for healing purposes and all of that type of stuff, read. And all such things as are either secret or manifest, them I know. You see that? So Solomon knew everything. Just imagine, this man knew all of that information. About the solar system and all of that other kind of stuff. Let's jump to uh, Ecclesiastes. Let's see what, what uh, I want to start at uh, 12, 13 and 12. Let's read that. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter I mean, 12 and 12, I'm sorry. Chapter 12 and verse 12. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. So he's like, you know, that look, there's a lot of information in books, and that stuff is never ending. So just imagine, Solomon knew everything. He knew the elements. He knew nature. He knew about the solar system and all of that. And even some of these books and stuff like that, he had information on that. Because uh, I believe it was, didn't Solomon have a witchcraft book from dealing with other nations and all that? Yeah, all those wives. He had a lot. Of, so Solomon knew a whole lot. But let's see what Solomon said at the end of that. Read. Let us say the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So you see that? See, all the stuff that Solomon knew at the end of the day, as wise as he was, he said, keep the commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go to Psalms 40. Let's read Psalms 40 and 8. You got something you want to say? Are you good? Psalms 40 and 8. Let's read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So you see that? So we should always delight in doing God's uh, will, which is his law. That's what we got to do. So let's go to Ezekiel 37. Because the Most High is raising up an army, and that's what we got to understand. And the army is order and structure and laws and rules and regulations, things that we got to follow. So let's get that. Ezekiel 30 and 10. Yeah, you can start at verse 9. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 37 and verse 9. Then he said unto me, Prophesy to the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord of God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. He said, Breathe upon these slain, meaning what? They dead. Our people in a dead state right now that they may live. Read. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. You see that? So he said they stood up on their feet a great army. So it's a lot of things that make up an army. When you think about an army, you don't think about uh, people that's in, like doing their own thing in disarray and those type of things. They got structure and order. When you see armies, there's always some type of uh, order. So, um, and they're coming from a dead state because earlier in here in Ezekiel, I'm trying to see if I can find it. Let me see what he said. Where it says, can these bones live? You know what I'm talking about? Verse four, read verse four. Let's see what Ezekiel, what, what the, the most high asked Ezekiel and what he said, read. Ezekiel 37 three, three. and verse three. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. You see that? So Ezekiel, he's looking at the state of our people right now. And God asked him, can these bones live? And Ezekiel like, only God, only you know. Just imagine what he saw coming from way back then in Jerusalem to today. Where you got uh, sisters and brothers looking the way they look and acting the way they act. You know, yeah. Brothers out here with dresses on and yeah, twerking and, you know, brothers twerking. It's, you know, it's, we in some madness, so you can just imagine going from that. That's why when we read, read verse 9 again, that's why he said this right here. Verse 9, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain. Breathe upon these what? Slain. Meaning they did. Just imagine, that's what he's saying. He's like, these people is wasted. He said, you got to breathe upon and read. That they may live. So that's talking about the law, that breath of life. So let's uh, read verse 10 again. Verse 10. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. So the laws came into them. So that's what's going to make you stand upon your feet and bring you to a great army. That's what you're saying, like when we had uh, some of the things that people saw in Chicago and uh, Tennessee. You understand that? You think about it, it's just brothers walking together in unity that they saw. It wasn't like we invented an uh, automobile or airplane or, you know, came, you know, we want, like we, uh, 
made a billion dollars. We just got together in order and walked around the block and everybody was amazed. So that's just showing you what that takes to do that. You know what I mean? Being on the same mind and everything. Read. Oh, you got hey, yeah, yeah. But real quick, but that thing, that thing was a beautiful thing. It was the spirit of the Lord that was making that thing uh, operate. The be yeah, the nations was afraid of that thing. Like I even know myself, man. I was out there thing walking, got a leg cramp, and I sent up prayers immediately. Please, Lord, don't take me out of this march. I gotta fulfill this mission. And that thing went away. I was like, all praises. Oh, <laughs> it, it, it was a sight to see, but it shows you, though, that everybody being on one accord in the same mind, the type of impact that that had, you know what I mean? Because a lot of times we think that oh, if we got a lot of money, if we do this, if we do that, that that's going to make a difference. But just brothers getting together on one accord mm -hmm. changed the whole outlook. And they're afraid of that thing. They uh, shut down the videos and everything else. You know what I mean? We didn't even say nothing really, but they was uh, shutting down the, you know, the videos on uh, Facebook and all of that stuff because they're seeing everybody in order. Okay, go ahead and read one. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dry and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Read. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. See that? So it's telling us right now that we got to come up out of the grave, meaning death. We headed towards death. To come into the land of Israel, that's talking about eternal life, the kingdom. Read. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. Read. And shall put my spirit in you. So the most high is going to put his spirit in us. How is he going to do that? Through the scriptures. That's what we got. We got to come back to keeping his commandments. Uh, what we read in, in Romans 15 and 4. Read. And ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Okay, so all right. So let's go ahead and jump to uh, Hebrews um, 13. Because in every army, you got commanders, you got captains, you got different... Uh, uh, officials, you know, that I don't know all the ranks and everything like that, but you got generals, generals, lieutenants, corporals, yeah, and it's a structure, you know what I mean? So, all also, I got structure. So, let's go to uh, Hebrews 13 and 7. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. So, here, luckily, you know, DC, you got the, the officers that's up here. But guess what? We got people over us and we got to follow those orders. Otherwise, we get moved out of the way. Read. Remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God. You see that? And spoken unto you. So as long as the, the leadership is coming out of the scriptures and giving you instruction, that's the most high God that's speaking to you and dealing with just really not those men. It's the most high God using those men to speak to you. Read. Whose faith follow. Considering the end of their conversation. Okay, so let's jump down to uh, verse 17. Verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. You see that? So I understand that. You know, they're watching for our souls. When I look at the leadership coming out of New York, sometimes they, they'll put out something or say something, and you don't even really get it at that time. But guess what? Obey that, because that's your, your leadership. Eventually, you're going to get it. You're going to say, I know, okay, now I understand why they said X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't see it right away. But read that again. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls. Okay, read. As they must give an account, mm -hmm. that they may do with joy and not with grief. You see that? Because they got to give an account. That's why they're looking out for us, because they, they held responsible. So the same with us. You know, we understand that the captains and the deacons and all that gonna have questions for us if we're not operating in the right spirit. So they they over us, and then they got you know it goes up the ladder. Go ahead and read. And not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. That's not profitable for you when you commit sins or you doing something that's out of order. It's no profit in you doing that. All right, so let's go to let's jump to the video. We're gonna show some examples of some order. Hey, oh, real quick. Hey, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So no, to add to your point, man, they just they just fear us gathering. 
They fear us coming together and being in unity against them. Mm -hmm. They want us to do their thing and not our thing. Not, not what thus said the Lord. They rather us, you know, follow their way. Get um, Zephaniah 2 and 1. Because this will be, this is our whole mo motive. This is our whole motive. And this is us following the scriptures and gathering according to the scriptures. But the book of Zephaniah. Two and uh, one. Chapter two and verse one. Gather yourselves together. So uh, that's what they fear. They fear us gathering together. When they saw that march we did in Memphis, when they saw the march we did in um, Chicago, they feared that thing. They made sure that we won't do this thing again. Let, let, let's let's shut them down. Oh, they haven't passed over in March. Okay, let's do a. a Let's do a, a pandemic. Let's shut that down. They're trying to figure out a way to shut us down, no matter what. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. Uh -huh. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. Because us seeing it, we know that we the nation that's not desired, but they not seeing it. Our people not seeing it. We don't even understand that us gathering together could shut them down. Our people not seeing that, but they know. They know if we keep gathering, then we gonna shut their nation down, and we never will. They never will come up up, up against us if we keep okay. gathering together the way we're doing it. And you wanna know what something? Uh, it's it's always been in their spirit. I mean, though know, we know that uh, the elite know the elite know who we are. They know already know about that. But it's always been in their spirit. Like think about the uh, the old Jim Crow laws. No more than three Negroes can join together. Yeah. Because they always feared our people joining together to rise up against them. And they called it a, a lawyer. They have a law against that. Of course, it's meant for a lot of our wicked people that do stuff. Wow. But for the most part, we can't gather at all. They say, no lawyer. You can't stand together. <laughs> they don't have problems with Negroes uh, coming together as long as it's in ignorance and, and, yeah. and sin. If you want to have a twerk competition or Go to a foolish, you know, event or something like that, a concert or something crazy like that. Ain't no problem. But let brothers get together on one accord and try to do something. Then all of a sudden you, uh, what do they call us? A hate group and uh, separatists and all of this other stuff. And, and you know, that's that's a good point because that's why they also feared uh, Malcolm X. They feel Martin Luther King. They fear any leader that organized the people, even if they were doing positive things just yeah. for their community, they feared those leaders. I remember it was one one group uh, that was policing their community, and I think it was Chicago or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they shut them down. They fear any type of organization that Jake is doing. It's always Jake. But Esau does this all day. Yeah, then you got the coons that try to shut down their own people. Yep. So we're going to show the, the video, though, when you don't follow orders, uh, what can happen. So let's go ahead and watch this uh, video real quick. A moment ago, you said that you ordered Lieutenant Kendrick to tell his men that Santiago wasn't to be touched. That's right. And Lieutenant Kendrick was clear on what you wanted? Crystal. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick ignored the order? Ignored the order? Any chance he forgot about it? No. Any chance Lieutenant Kendrick left your office and said, the old man is wrong? No. When Lieutenant Kendrick spoke to the platoon and ordered them not to touch Santiago, any chance they ignored him? You ever served in an infantry unit, son? No, sir. Ever served in a forward area? No, sir. Ever put your life in another man's hands? Asked him to put his life in yours? No, sir. We follow orders, son. We follow orders or people die. It's that simple. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Crystal. So you see what he said? He said, we follow orders or people die. Mm. That was the whole point. So, and we got to do that in Israel. Especially, you know, coming out of this Bible, like God gives a rule. Like when you read the Bible, some, some people got jacked up for some crazy stuff in the Bible. I think it was the uh, brother, what was his name, Uzel, that you read about uh, where the ark was falling down. And you think that they had slipped with the ark. And you think, man, this dude's doing a valiant thing by grabbing the ark and keeping it from hitting the ground. 
The Most High had certain people that were supposed to touch that. That was the order. Guess what? When he did that, he got put to death. And you think in, in your in your mind, you thinking, man, he was just trying to help out. But guess what? He didn't follow the order though. So the Most High put him to death. And they say he was a good, you know, he was when you read it, he was a good man. David agreed about that thing, but he didn't say nothing. He kept his mouth shut. That's what the scriptures say. He he was mad about it. He didn't say nothing about it. So let's go to Luke 10 and uh, 16. Let's read that right there. The book of Luke, chapter 10 and verse 16. He that heareth you, heareth me. So guess what? When we hear the leadership, uh, like over us, I'm just going to speak for me personally. We understand that they speak in the scriptures to us. They that we hearing that we read read that what Christ is saying there. He that heareth you heareth me. Read. And he that despiseth you despiseth me. Read. And he that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. So ultimately, if you don't agree with what's coming down, you hate God. Especially if you under righteous men and you understand that that they're gonna give you counsel and understanding and according to the scriptures, and then you go against that. Guess what? They dealing with Christ. Christ is the is is the mediator. So Christ is, is dealing with who? God. So that's the chain of command there. When you don't follow that, you really despise God. That's what that's going into. You got something you want to bring up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, because you know, it's like, remember the scripture tell us to rehearse the righteous acts. When we in the kingdom, do you think that everybody's gonna be able to do whatever the hell you want? No. This will be rank structure. And you have to follow orders all the time. There's guidelines set up. You won't, there won't be uh, 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 brothers just doing whatever the hell they want, sisters doing whatever they want, disrespecting their husbands. Oh, no, that's not going to be going on during the kingdom. Y'all got to understand, the Most High is a God of order. When you read about how the angels deal with them, they only speak when it's time for them to speak. So that's why we must, on earth, Rehearse the righteous acts because when we go to the kingdom, it's all going to be ordered. Right. That's that's how we say that because when you actually examine all the works of the Most High, all His creation, everything does what it's been programmed to do, except the Negro. We're the only road program that's out there. The white man's doing his job. The other nations, the sun, as I know, rises in the east, sets in the west. the The moon still controls the oceans, but black people, we just do. We were told to keep the laws and we just do whatever we want to do. The only bad program is creation. I'm going to tell you, the Negro, he does what he's programmed to do out of America. He, he <laughs> operates to the program. The white man has put a virus in his brain and created a new creation, the, the nigger bite. And he will perform everything that the white man say, but when, we, when it comes to the laws, we can't do that. That's why we got to be converted, man. I'm telling you. Hey, the, hey, hey, and that's a good point because... We got to remember, we got to remember the Most High brought us all out of Egypt. This time he said, no, two-thirds of Israel, I'm killing because I can't deal with them. They just turned into Nicolites. So they disobedient children. So therefore, I'm cutting them all off. All crazy. We're going to run a clip. It's a comedy clip, but it's still a, a point in it. Go ahead and run the clip. Right here. It's still a point in it. What the hell was that, you little freckle face cartoon? Did I give you permission to sneeze, Obey? No, sir. Then you hold it in, you big ear turd. Otherwise, I'll kick your ass back to Mayberry. <laughs> oh, I see we have a sickly boy on our hands. Well, we're gonna have to boost your immune system, son. Drop down, give me 25 push up now. Cameraman! One, sir. <laughs> 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 bleep, What are you laughing at, pig boy? You find a piece of candy in your pocket? No, sir! What's your name, Tubby? He Heathcote, sir! Heathcote. You know, you remind me of the dough boy. If I poke your stomach, we'll make it go. Oh you know what? I'm going to help you make room for lunch, bacon boy. Drop down and give me dirty shit up right now. Let's go. Count him out. Let me see that belly roll. One, tubby, tubby. One, sir. Come on, pork chop. Two, chubby, Two, chubby. Sir. You 
is a pure oh, genius. Sure. Who you, Red Fox? No, better yet, you rich pride agent. <laughs> What's your name, girlfriend? Dwight Williams, but boys call me D, so <laughs> you call me D. D, hmm? Yeah, brother? <laughs> you like the way I handle these white boys, D. <laughs> oh, yeah. He think you feel good to see a black man run that, huh? <laughs> Malcolm X. Well, let me tell you something, D. Yeah, brother? Why don't you come closer? <laughs> What are you looking at, ass eyes? Nothing, sir. You plotting on me, boy? No, sir. Well, let me tell you something, ass eyes. Let me tell you all something. War has made me very paranoid. And when a man gets the eyeball at me, it makes my agent orange jack up. And I get the urge to kill. Do you understand me? Sir, yes, sir. Do you all understand me? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Muscle-head. You stupid? You ignorant or you just plain old deaf? Yes, sir. Actually, he is deaf. Oh. Well, thank you. Now drop down. Give me 25 more for speaking out of line. One, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Sir. Handicapped Man. I didn't mean to offend you. Do you speak sign language? Can you read lips? Let me break it down. If you don't answer me when I speak to you, I'm gonna put my foot in your ass. Is that clear, dummy? Three and three. Y'all, y'all get the point. <laughs> order's gotta be even in comedy. They'll show you that. Look, this rank in order. You understand that? It, is. it was a funny clip and everything like that, but it's showing you though this structure. We gotta have structure. We wanna get a little bit more serious. Let's get this in Joshua real quick. The book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithsoever thou goest. So what's that telling you right there? If you, if you do turn to the left or the right, you're not going to prosper. It's saying that we got to do all, of, we got to observe all according to all the laws that Moses gave us. So guess what? He gave us all the laws that's going to help us to live right. Dietary law, uh, you got your uh, civil, law, law. civil laws, all the different laws that we got, that we got to observe. So we got to go through here, study and read and apply all of these laws. Let's jump to, uh, where we go? Let's keep, keep on, on reading. Keep on this Let's book of the law up. shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. So the only way you can do all that is written is you got to study. That's why I say meditate day and night. Keep reading. For then shalt thou make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So a lot of reasons, a lot of times the reason why we're not having success is because we're not doing what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee with, whithersoever thou goest. So the most high going to be with us as long as we obey him and keeping his commandments. Let's jump to uh, verse 16. Verse 16. And they answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. Okay, so guess what? The most high, uh, Moses, before he died, had, through the most high, had set up Joshua as the next leader. So guess what? Joshua's commands was coming from the most high. Mm -hmm. So when they when they answered this question, read that again, verse, I mean, when they answered uh, Joshua, read, read verse 16 again. And they answered Joshua, saying, all that thou commandest us, we will do. And whatsoever thou sendest us, we will go. So they understand that the Most High was giving them those commands. That's why they said that. So go ahead and read. According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. You see that? Because they understand that the Most High was operating through Joshua. Read. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest him, 
He shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. <laughs> you see that? They say you're going to be put to death. Them wicked Negroes that don't want to uh, submit, they're going to die. All right, so let's go to uh, Nehemiah 8. Let's, let's hit that right there. This is to show you the destruction. Because we saw, we in, we in the army. We in the Lord's army. And you just think about how serious Esau's army is or how serious um, Moab's army is when you see him marching and all of that stuff. You think that the Most High's army ain't going to be more thorough than that? Mm -hmm. Read that. The book of Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 4. And Ezra the scribe stood up upon a pulpit of wood, which they made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah, and Shema, and Ananiah, and Uriah, and Hilkiah, and Messiah, 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 on his right hand. So you what? There's order. Every, they had all these people standing up there in order on his right hand, read. And on his left hand, Padiah, and Mishael, and Malachiah, and Hashem, and Hashbada, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Mishalom. Read. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. You see that? When he opened up the book, everybody stood up. It's showing you order right there. There was order right there. Where are we going down to? Down to eight. Down to eight. Keep reading. That's the camp formation we got. Yeah, that's the camp formation that we got right there. That's what we just read. Read. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen, Amen. With lifting up their lifting up their hands and they bowed their heads. So you see, everybody's on one accord. Read and worship the Lord with their faces to the ground. Verse eight. So they read in the book of the law of God distinctly, mm -hmm. and gave the sense mm -hmm. and caused them to understand the reading. You see that? And that's what the leadership done with us, and that's what they uh, they they teach us. And one thing, like one of the old videos, I can't remember the name of the video that I, I watched when I first came in. Uh, Bishop was talking about how they were instructed when he was coming up and how they weren't allowed to use their own words. There's a certain thing where you had, to, if you went too long just talking on your own and you wasn't going to the scripture, they would pull you down. You understand that? So that's what this is saying right here. Go ahead, officer. So basically they pulled off the Phineas. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, but, the, but that, that's why this room we read earlier how things written the four time written for our learning. That's why their order's set up on how the camp formation is supposed to be set up. Because our forefathers of old, the apostles, they did that thing. Mm -hmm. That's what that's that's the instruction that was read. So now we do that today. Because you might have brothers might say, Well, I don't like the way we hold formation. Why we gotta do it like that? It's scriptural. Mm -hmm. That's why it's done. Things written aforetime were written for all learning. And even brothers that be out of camp, you know, if you get to babbling too long, oh, the thing is coming, get the script. Yeah. Get the script. You take too long, he's taking you down. So he's following the uh, example of our forefathers. Yeah, because I, I remember Bishop, that was one of the first things that Bishop said that, uh, that I remember uh, when I first started watching videos. But I like that because the whole reason why I joined uh, up with IUIC is because they answered everything according to the Bible. So like, you know, in a traditional church, you go there, you ask a question, they just shoot from the hip off the top of their head, and none of the stuff ever made any sense. But, you know, when somebody can show you writing a book, so when you read, read verse 8 again, there what it said? Uh, Nehemiah 8 and 8, just read that real quick. Something like that. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8 and verse 8. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You see that? So they read out of the book and it gave the sense on it. I mean, they gave a breakdown so that you knew that what they were speaking to you was the word of God. It just wasn't coming up with their own theories or whatever. All right, so let's go to uh, Joel 2 to show the structure. We're going to read through this real quick to show you the order of how how we're going to be getting down uh, when we take the world back over. Read that. Joel chapter 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and a strong. There hath not been ever the light. Neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. 
So it's, it's like, you know, we're going to be transformed at this time. We're going to be in a, a whole nother level as far as strength and all of that. Read. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen they shall run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble, as a strong people set in a battle array. People set in a battle array. Showing you that when we come through there, we clean the house, man. There ain't going to be nothing left. Read. Before their face, the people shall be much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. So when they see us coming, they're going to be, they be stressed. They, they know it's going to be a wrap. You can read that in the scriptures uh, in uh, Deuteronomy and um, when we started conquering lands, how terrified the nation was. Some of them would just flee out of fear. Read. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march everyone on his ways. You see that? They shall march everyone on his ways. Read. And they shall not break their ranks. You see that? That's going to be order. You're not going to break your rank. You're giving an order. You're going to follow it to the T. Read. Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So it says, they shall walk everyone in his path. Meaning whatever order he was given, he's going to follow that. And we're not going to be rooted, uh, uh, wounded either. So we're going to be in that transformed figure. Read. They shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Keep reading. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Before his what? His army. Read. For his camp is very great. He called it a what? His camp is very great. Read. For he is strong that executed his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, and who can abide it? You see that? So guess what? In the last days, the Most High going to have his army together putting in that work. And they're going to be in order. There ain't going to be no Negro doing his own thing. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.